hardest genres on the console to sort of crack has been strategy games. People were making games that uh, both ran on the PC and ran on the console. They weren't taking advantage of the controller, they weren't taking advantage of the screen, the television. All right, we're going to rework this and we're not going to build a game that can work on both and we're not going to do that. We're building a game for the console and we said, let's start from the beginning. We took it up to Microsoft and talked with them and really they came to the, the mutual conclusion that the right thing for this game was to, to marry our gameplay with a, a universe that people understood already. When we were told um, that Halo was, was available, we had to learn a lot more about the Halo universe. And who doesn't want to work with, with, with the Halo franchise? And taking that, th those characters, that world, and putting our gameplay with it was sort of a, a perfect marriage. During that time, we found out that Halo itself started out as an RTS game, which, of course, was kind of interesting. I want to feel, in every game, like I can invest myself in, in that world somehow. We realized very early on that one thing we had to get right was the controls. One of the biggest uh, concerns I know that's out there on the internet is, you know, well, how, how can a strategy game exist without a mouse and a keyboard? They're going to have to figure out a way to, to, to get the same gameplay on a console controller. And I think we've done that in Halo Wars. One common thread is each time we went back and sort of rethought about controls, they got simpler. What are the basic fundamentals that are fun about RTS? How do we have to control them? How do we use our controller to control them? I wanted one button to do one thing. Whereas before, you look at a console strategy game, as well, if you press this button here with the, with the trigger pulled, pull the other trigger at the same time, and press these two buttons, it's just, it's just too much. A lot of things came out of that. The circle menu came out of that. The circle menu that we, that we use in uh, Halo Wars is one of the things that I think really stands out in the game. It's, it uses what we call the rule of eight. If you click on uh, a building, you see the circle menu pop up. And there's eight choices there that you can pick from. And being, you know, the 12 o'clock versus the 3 o'clock and the, sort of in between the 1 and 2 and like and all the way around. It was, was really simple to press A, push the left stick and press A again. You could do things just as fast as you could on a PC. After you start to play, you'll realize that your thumbs just do the right thing. They, they, they kind of go where you would expect them to go. I think when you have the previous Halo games out there and you've got such a huge fan base of, uh, of Halo fans that are anxious to see what, what you do next, it, it sets a huge bar for you to have to meet and, uh, you know, their expectations and exceed their expectations. Patience is not infinite. We have to live up to the, the Halo franchise and the expectations people have. So, you know, they expect to get a great story out of Halo and, you know, I'm certainly a little biased, but I think the way that, that we told our Halo stories is going to help set a bar back on Halo itself to tell their stories even better next time. These guys just don't know when to quit. The way that strategy gamers, you know, who know enough about the, the origins of the genre, you know, they go back and talk about Dune 2 and, you know, the early Warcraft games, and I hope in 10 years people are talking about Halo Wars in the same way. Background.